Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity for Commander. Today I wanted to try something a little bit different, and I'll be pitting five of the most popular dragon type commanders against each other to see who is the best. Before we begin though, if you are planning to purchase any of the cards you see in this video, or any cards at all for that matter, please consider using our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra to do so, but it really helps out the channel. So, without further ado, let's take a look at our contestants. First off, we have the fan favourite, that is to say the legend who commands the most decks of EDHREC.com. Yes, it's the dragon commander everybody knows best, the Ur Dragon. Up next, we have the Old Reliable, a creature that has been leading dragon title decks for over a decade. Representing this title, we have an absolute classic of a card, Scion of the Ur Dragon. Next up we have the competitor I like to call the up and coming, a legendary creature who's only been around for a few years but is really making waves already. In this position we have a dragon I'm sure you're familiar with, Mirim Sentinel Worm. Our penultimate category is called the budget leader and will set you back less than a dollar to purchase them. This time around we have an often overlooked creature that I believe can still pack a punch, Rivaz of the Claw. And rounding up our contestants, we have my favourite category, the wild card. This slot is reserved for a card that breaks the mould in some way, and this time around we have Savitri, Dragon Master. So now we have our commanders revealed, let's jump straight into round one, card pool. This round I'll be using the power of statistics to rank our commanders based on how many dragons are available to them in their colour identity. For instances where numbers are similar, I'll be taking into consideration the power of the card pool available, as numbers aren't everything. In 5th place we have Savitri, whose absence of red mana really hurts her in this department. As you can see from the graph on the screen, a whopping 66% of all non colourless dragons are at least partially red, with Savitri only having access to a measly 51 out of 316 commander legal dragons. Not a great start for our Demir Planeswalker, I must say. In 4th place we have Rizav, who has 164 dragons at their disposal. Not a bad amount by any means, but black does have the lowest number of dragons of any of the 5 colours, meaning this is basically a mono red deck with a few splashes. Next we have Mirim, whose 3 colour identity gives them access to 212 dragons. I was actually quite surprised that blue had the second most amount of dragons of any of the colours behind red, but then remembered we've had two D&D sets and a Tarkia block, so it makes sense. And finally, in joint first place, we have the Ur Dragon and Scion of the Ur Dragon. It should go without saying that both of these five colour dragons have access to every single dragon legal in Commander, including the awesome three coloured ones from Tarkia and Dominaria. Well, that is it for round one, but there's still everything to play for, on to round two, flexibility. In this round I'll be examining how good our commanders are in different situations, and how they can help you out during different circumstances. In last place here we have Mirim, whose ability does absolutely nothing without external help. To put it bluntly, if you're unable to get any dragons out onto the table, Mirim's text box might as well be five lines shorter. In 4th place we have a card that may just shock you, and that is the Ur Dragon. Lowering the cost of each of your dragons from the command zone is an absolutely incredible ability, and I have no issue with this at all. It's the Ur Dragon's second ability that troubles me when it comes to flexibility. Drawing cards and then being able to cheat them into play for free is really powerful, but only as powerful as the cards you draw or have in your hand already, and I'm looking for a card with consistency, not something that relies on random chance. Next we have Rizav, who has two very powerful and flexible abilities. Firstly, you can add two mana to your mana pool of any colour combination, both ramping you and fixing your colours. And in addition to this, Rizav allows you to cast dragons from your graveyard, allowing you to bring back your fallen creatures or dragons that have been milled. And it's this ability to plan your strategy based on known information that puts this creature above the previously two mentioned dragons. Our runner-up for this round is Savitri, who has an awful lot of flexibility, even for a planeswalker. She has a minus three ability that lets you search your library for a dragon and put it into your hand. Amazing! She has a minus seven ability, which will in most circumstances be a one-sided board wipe. Incredible! 
and heck, even her plus one ability punishes your opponents for attacking you. Norn's Annex eats your heart out. So yeah, a surprise contender takes the number two spot. I do love it when that happens. And that leaves space for Scion of the Air Dragon in place number one. Who would have guessed that being able to transform into any dragon from your library would result in such flexibility? Everyone? Good. For this category, there really was no competition for the top spot. Scion had it from the get-go. So with the scores updated, let's move swiftly on to round three, Impact Factor. For this round, I'll be taking a look at how much value our contestants bring to the table themselves, and how much impact they have when cast. In last place, we have a card that will probably surprise a lot of you, Scion of the Ur Dragon. Now, now, hear me out. Scion has a very powerful ability, of that there is no doubt at all. However, when it all boils down to it, Scion doesn't actually do anything impactful by themselves. As previously mentioned, being able to transform your command into any dragon in your library is incredibly flexible. However, the Scion is pretty much a vanilla 4 for most of the time. They require other cards to be powerful, and for that fact, they take the 5th place this round. In 4th place, we have Rizav, who packs a surprising amount of value for a 3 mana creature. If you get this fella out turn 3, then you can easily be cast in a 6 mana dragon turn 4, which is nothing to sniff at. And as if that wasn't enough, Rizav allows you to cast your fallen dragons from the graveyard, giving them a second chance at life. This means that removal spells for your biggest threats are only temporary solutions to the problem, as you'll be casting them again the next turn. I love it. The only factor holding this guy back is the same as the Scions, his reliance on other cards to be useful. Next up we have Savitri, who can start helping you out from the second she hits the table. You need a specific dragon to help you get out of a sticky situation or to combo off with, Savitri's got your back. You need a way of deterring your opponent's massive board from attacking you, Savitri can help with that too. Honestly, I'm surprised that this $5 planeswalker has outshined half of the other competitors on this list, but sometimes you've got to take a step back and notice the value of each card that you play, and this card certainly has value. Our runner-up for round 3 is the Ur Dragon, who like Rizab and the Scion before them, does rely on other cards to make the most out of their ability. I've played several games against this commander where their controller has attacked, drawn a card, and put a land into play, and that is devastating to see. In spite of all this, the Ur Dragon still scores pretty highly on this round, given that it is a 10-10 of flying, which is pretty threatening in its own right. And finally in first place we have Mirim, who literally doubles the value of any dragon you put into play. Getting two Ancient Copper Dragons for 6 mana, or two Terror of the Peaks for 5 is insane value, and the reason why Mirim scores first in this category. But that's enough of that, on to the next round! For this round we'll be looking at castability, and focusing on how easy it is to get your commander onto the battlefield. Because there's no point having a fantastic commander if you never get to play them. In 5th place we have the Ur Dragon, who costs a whopping 9 mana, including 1 of each colour. There isn't really much I can say here, a high mana value makes it more difficult to cast. Pretty simple. In 4th place we have Scion of the Ur Dragon. Whilst this dragon is only 5 mana, it runs into an issue all of its own, and that is that it costs 1 of each colour. Now, I know that most high powered decks will be able to get these 5 different colours by turn 5 using fetch lands and shock lands, however this category is about ease of casting, and that's a lot of hoops to jump through just to play your commander. Next up we have Mirim, who has less colours in their identity than the previous two competitors, but more than the next two. They also cost 6 mana, which is a bit of a bummer, but at least 3 of that is generic, so you should have no issue filling it with whatever colours you have available. Coming in at number 2 we have Savitri, whose low mana value and duo colour costs do make it quite easy to cast them. The only reason she comes in at second is because she costs more mana than the card in first. And last but not least we have Rivaz, who comes in with his first victory in this video. At only 3 mana and 2 colours, Rivaz is downright easy to get into play. Heck, you can still manage it with a colourless land and a Rakdos Canarium on turn 3. And finally, we come to our last round, Durability. It's all well and good having a powerful commander with tons of flexibility, but if you struggle to keep them on the table, you're unlikely to see their full potential. Coming in in last place, we have Rivaz, who has no form of protection or evasion whatsoever. Well, okay, he has Menace, but so? 
He also has relatively low toughness and can be taken out by everybody's favourite EDH staple removal spell, Lightning Bolts. In 4th place we have Savitri, who like most Planeswalkers has no real way of protecting herself. The only reason she scores higher than Rivaz in this instance is because she's able to tutor for a dragon as a potential blocker and her plus 1 ability may deter people from attacking. Taking the bronze medal for this round we have the Ur Dragon, who is the first competitor so far to have any form of evasion in the way of flying. They're also likely to avoid falling to most damage based removal spells and are unlikely to die in combat unless your opponents throw their entire board beneath them, which is always handy when they cost 11 mana to recast. In second place we have Mirim, whose ward 2 makes them so much harder for your opponents to target with their removal spells. It may not sound like much, but paying 4 mana for a Doom Blade when your opponent has other spells they want to be casting may deter them from targeting your commander with it. And finally in first place we have Scion of the Ur Dragon. Just like a certain pink jelly-like Pokemon, this creature can adapt to any situation your opponents throw at them. Your opponent casts a kill spell, activate their ability and turn them into a hexproof dragon. Another player casts a board wipe, activate the Scion's ability to turn it into a Mercerum Predator and make them indestructible. The possibilities are endless. And with that we come to the end of our 5 rounds. Let's tally up the scores and see who has won. In 5th place with 13 points we have Rivaz. A valiant effort, but there's a reason this guy is valued at less than a dollar. In 4th position with 14 points we have Savitri. The lack of red mana in her casting costs really hurt her from climbing any higher, if only she were Grixis. 3rd place goes to the Ur Dragon with 14.5 points. Although they are the poster child for most dragon typal decks, their high mana cost and low flexibility have landed them with a bronze medal. Our runner up position goes to none other than Scion of the Ur Dragon with 16.5 points. With an amazing card pool, high flexibility and high durability, this creature was only let down by the fact that they do nothing without support from others. Such a shame. And that leaves in first place with half a point more than the Scion, Mirim. What this creature lacks in flexibility, it more than makes up for with impact and durability, which is why I've awarded Mirim first place for the best dragon type or commander. But that is it for this video. Do you disagree with the scores I've given? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget if you like this video you can help to support our channel in 4 quick and easy ways. Liking, subscribing, hitting that bell icon and commenting as mentioned before. I'd like to give a huge thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons for supporting us through the years. Without you we wouldn't be able to continue making videos such as this, so thank you. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!